Years before the Black Lives Matter movement in the United States came CNN's highly acclaimed documentaries, Black in America and Latino in America. As a main television anchor at CNN, Soledad O'Brien became a symbol of the changing face of America when in 2008, she thrust the issue of race into the spotlight with these two programs. As a journalist and now head of her own company, Soledad retains an enviable perch into race relations in America, with her documentaries continuing to tackle this issue. We spoke with her at her offices in New York City at 41 degrees north and 74 degrees west. It happened in July 2008, mere months before the U.S. would elect its first black president. CNN premiered its Black in America series as the complexion of the country was subtly changing. The host was Soledad O'Brien. It really was the executives at CNN were interested in doing a series that looked at African Americans and asked me to host it. And then we realized how wildly successful it was. I mean CNN premiered its Latino in America series a year later. My name is Lorena Garcia. My name is Jesse Garcia. And it was clear Soledad had struck a chord. Que rico! She captured America's shifting reality as the white majority looked threatened to be overtaken by a mushrooming brown minority. People talked about 2030, 2020, 2050 being this time in which the, the population would become majority brown and black. And I think that has literally scared the crap out of people. I think some people are very much reacting to the shifting, you know, change scares people. I think change in what America looks like, what their neighbors look like, scares people. Fast forward, the U.S. presidential campaign was underway. When Mexico sends its people, they're not sending their best. They're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime, they're rapists, and some I assume are good people. Ladies and gentlemen, the next president of the United States, Donald Trump. The election would be fought and arguably won in large part on issues of race, migration, and identity. Court all illegal aliens. You came here illegally, you broke the law. Issues that Soledad had documented on screen years before. I think it's a tension that's always been there. I think it's just been invisible to people. Black people do that going on for a long time. CNN's Black in America series gave viewers an honest look at the lives of the disenfranchised black community, covering issues like colorism and identity, single parenthood, and black male incarceration. Black men are six times more likely to go to prison than white men. When Soledad left CNN and started her own company, Starfish Media, in 2013... The end point is really the end point. Uh, my tenure, obviously, at the helm of the show ends today, and I'm... She continued the series with Black and Blue, documenting police brutality against blacks. A cell phone captures policing spinning out of control. By the end of this video, he'll be dead. And he can kill Eric Garner on camera, right, while he's literally gasping for breath. <laughs> This is the most horrible feeling that a mother could feel. The notable killings of Eric Garner in New York, Michael Brown in Ferguson, Missouri, Freddie Gray in Baltimore, and others all triggered the Black Lives Matter movement. We know by media reports the degree to which black lives are woefully undervalued. We see it every day. The answer to when someone says black lives matter is not all lives matter. That's literally the equivalent of saying to somebody, screw you, your issue is not important. <laughs> so I think it's some of it's just listening. Some of it's being willing to learn for people who don't necessarily get it. As a journalist, Soledad O'Brien did get it, having grown up in a multiracial family near New York City in the 1970s. Her early life prepared her for some of the issues she would grow up to cover. My mom was black and Cuban, my dad is white and Australian, and in our neighborhood in the North Shore of Long Island, New York, when I grew up in the late 1960s, the 1970s, we definitely did not blend at all. Um, but I don't know that I had anything to really compare it to. You know, I knew that my parents were, that we did things differently. Even her name, now famous in the world of television and journalism... Please welcome Soledad O'Brien! 
made her understand back then just how different she was. Maria de la Soledad, Teresa Marchetti O'Brien. The Blessed Virgin Mary of Solitude. I just had moments um, where someone would say, you know, where'd you get that weird name? Or, you know, I just every so often these racial slurs. Um, and they were, were, were not hurtful as much as baffling. I mean, because you felt like so much a part of a fabric of a community and then all of a sudden someone would remind you like, no, no, not you really. As her own boss, now partnering with major distribution outlets, Soledad is ideally positioned to highlight issues and stories that matter to her and to her audience. I Me mean, right now, I think the thing I'm most proud of is building a company from nothing and deciding that I wanted to create something that would just be, you know, focused on the way I saw stories that had my point of view. O'Brien's mission is to expose the human experience, both in the U.S. and internationally. Cuba is making as usual with our country. We don't make good deals. With the political changing of the guard in the U.S. and the recent thaw in relations with America now uncertain, this seasoned journalist could find herself reporting next from where else? but the Caribbean. Might we see you in the Caribbean? Gosh, um, certainly we'll be doing, working on a project in Cuba right now, actually. And um, yeah, absolutely. The preceding segment was brought to you by Jay and Bank. So this is where we bring 18 Degrees North to a close for this week. Join us online, look us up on Twitter, send us your thoughts on Facebook. We're there to keep all of us connected to the Caribbean. From all of us here at 18 Degrees North, I'm Zara Burton. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Eighteen Degrees North is a production of Global Reporters for the Caribbean.